So thank you again for joining. My name is Hillel Charm. I'm the Senior Account Manager over here at Law Ruler. Um, I'm, I'm also joined by our Head of Product, Dan Jacobs. Dan, go ahead. Hey, everybody. Say hi. Um, and so what we're going to talk about today is we're going to go into our brand new Law Ruler Sonar dashboard. Um, and these dashboards are going to be able to give you lots of really important information into your portal. Just before we get started, just a little bit about um, our company. So Law Ruler transformed over the last six years from a startup to an established platform in the area of intake and practice management. Um, it's always been one of our goals as a company to enable our clients to succeed um, by offering solutions that help them capture and re retain more clients per capita than any of their competitors. So, and as always, Law Ruler is built on, you know, a Microsoft Azure, which is, you know, the most trusted platform when it comes to cloud computing. You know, 90% of Fortune 500 companies use it. You know, you can always know that um, our products offer encryption, redundancy, and are designed for data protection. So what we're going to talk about during the demo, the webinar today is our Law Ruler Sonar dashboards. So what really are dashboards? So dashboards are going to allow you to track those key vital statistics in your firm that allow you to make the right and informed decision making. So we call those KPIs or key performance indicators. They can be things like, you know, the, the success of your marketing spends, the productivity of your employees, how many new signups you've had, you know, what types of practice areas in your firm are growing. So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna open up the system and we'll go ahead and take a quick look at what our new Law Ruler dashboards actually look like. So just bear with me one second and we'll get that all set up. Just stand by one moment. So while, while Hillel is loading up the the dashboard demonstration. You know, we wanted to share that right now there are, you know, roughly between nine and 15 different reports that have to be run in order to get the same level of data that you're going to get out of this one view. You know, imagine driving a, you know, driving a car, you have the dashboard right in front of the driver's seat where you can see what's going on with the car at all times without having to check the oil, check the tire pressure, brakes and everything else while the car is moving. Very similar to running a business. You can't possibly check all of these different key performance indicators while your law firm is running simultaneously in an efficient or effective way. So this dashboard that we created based upon feedback of some of the most successful firms in the country is actually giving you a picture from the beginning, the middle to the end of a case where it settles and allowing you to pinpoint issues, just like when you look at the dashboard of a car, where you can see what might be going on immediately without having to drill down and, and run all these different reports and, and not be efficient with that activity. So I'll let you take it from here. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, so like Dan said, what, the goal of this dashboard was really to take a lot of different KPIs or key performance indicators, you know, different things that we'd see on all different reports inside the system, kind of bring them together in one unified view. That way, you know, as a decision maker in the firm, you're able to see really all of those key statistics that you need to be able to inform your decision making. So we've taken a bunch of the different reports, we put them all onto one screen, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of go through what each one of these are and what those statistics show um, as far as, you know, making those decisions. So we're just gonna start at the top. Obviously our open leads, these are all the open leads inside of the system. So what do we mean by open leads? So an open lead is somebody that you haven't spoken to yet, someone that hasn't really progressed through your workflow. So, you know, something that we know is that almost 80% of customers purchase from the first uh, vendor that they talk to, the first company that, they, that responds to them. So, you know, it's really key to be able to get back and to your leads immediately um, rather than having kind of them float around in the system. So knowing how many open leads you have, which again, if we take a look, we can explore the details. This is gonna show us specifically all the people that, you know, ultimately could have fallen through the cracks. So, you know, this is gonna, one of the most obvious metrics that we'll show. So this shows all those different people that are in those different statuses inside the system. We can look through and see 
all of the people when they came into Law Ruler, you know, how long they've been sitting there. And that that lets us know really, did we drop the ball with one of these? You know, why didn't we get back to some of these different people inside the system? So, you know, keeping an eye on the open leads in the system is really going to be a goal. Um, obviously, so, this should be, you know, as close to zero as you can so that we don't really have anybody that hasn't flowed through the workflow. Yeah, so Hill, is it fair to say that anybody who's in the open leads category has not been addressed, that it could be a new lead or opportunity or referral that somehow slipped through the cracks, as you mentioned, or, you know, is not qualified or, you know, hasn't had any action taken on it. And it's more or less an inbox of what needs to be addressed immediately if it's not very, a very low number in that category. Exactly right. So this is this is somebody that, you know, could have come into the portal from a variety of means, um, but just has not been qualified. They haven't been reached out to yet. You know, they haven't flowed through the workflow because the goal is, you know, once you get a hold of an, once you actually get a hold of a client uh, or a potential client, you know, the goal is to qualify them immediately. If they're qualified, sign them up. If they're not qualified, reject them. So really, we shouldn't see a lot of people in this open leads category because this means that they haven't made their way through that workflow. Um, to complement so, that, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, without looking much further, you know, as a manager, if I see that number growing and not going down, I know that maybe my, my new opportunities, my intakes are not being addressed in a timely fashion, or maybe I don't have enough coverage with my staff to do it. Maybe I need to look to supplement staff or outsource some of my intake to a call center potentially, but if that number is growing exponentially and it's not going down, it's telling you that there is a potential issue. It, it, there's silver lining to it if that number is going up and, and, the, and the stuff is being handled efficiently and timely, then you know that you're going to drive more revenue if that number you know, is increasing but still being worked on. Exactly. Well, like Dan mentioned, you shouldn't see this number just keep growing and growing and growing and growing without, you know, there any there being any kind of fluctuations, you should see, you know, if your firm is, you know, generating a good amount of, of leads, then it would make sense that they would, you'd see leads coming into the system. But the goal is that this shouldn't just keep spiking in an upward trend. It should really kind of, you know, maybe smoothly move up as you're increasing your marketing. Um, so we also have a couple of metrics that are going to show, you know, this is, this is straightforward. This is just who's, you know, kind of jumping on the different leads in the system, making sure that they're being taken care of. But we also want to know not just that they're flowing through the workflow, but really is my team, is your team able to close the deal? So are they actually able to sign up these di different leads that are in the system? So by looking at a couple of these different metrics, we can kind of make those determinations. You know, obviously, <clears throat> you know, something that we all know when it comes to intake is that conversion decreases dramatically after the first minute of waiting for you know a law firm to respond back to one of these people so you know we see them coming into the system but are we actually selling the law firm and signing up these people so you know the open leads is basically someone that hasn't moved through the workflow total leads is showing you all the total leads that are inside of the system so you know we can obviously make some comparisons but then we can by looking at the pending e signs and the new signups now we can actually see is my staff closing the deals? So pending e-signs, this one is pretty straightforward. This is just anybody that has an outstanding e-sign agreement that still hasn't been signed. You know, as an intake manager or you know, as a decision maker in the firm, obviously you want to see the pending e-signs go down. But the fact that you have pending e-signs isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just means that you've sent contracts to people; they just haven't necessarily signed it. So this is going to be a good way to make sure that your staff members are actually following up on these people. Because you know this is, it's going to be a goal of the firm to sell these specific clients. So, you know, keeping an eye on how many pending e signs you have is definitely important. But if we look at the new signups, what this does is this actually shows us how many of my total leads have actually signed up with the firm. So, and there's actually a couple of really vital statistics in here um, that are important to take note of. So, not only is this tile showing me the people that have signed their e signs, it's even able to to determine all the people that have signed up that are not an e-sign client. Maybe you've mailed contracts out, the contracts have finally come back and have 
you know, been uploaded into LawRuler, and these people have been indicated that they're signed. So this report shows you your signups. You know, it shows all the different signups over time. We can see the different signups by case type, so you can see which areas of your practice are growing, and then we can even see the e-sign status, so whether they're completed e-signs or they're non-e-signs. So this gives you, you know, not only does this tell you, you know, how well your your staff is doing it, you know, in sales and actually closing the different clients, but it also tells you which practice areas are really growing. So you can use this to get some insights into where you really want to be directing your marketing dollars. If you notice that, you know, you you want to grow your criminal um, practice area, but, you know, you just see that your marketing is 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 consistently bringing in auto accidents, you know, maybe you need to make an adjustment there. Or, you know, you could take the opposite. Maybe, you know, you notice that you're signing up lots and lots of auto accidents and that tells you I should increase my marketing in auto accidents because that will maximize the revenue for my firm. So, you know, taking a look at your different signups and, you know, being able to drill down and explore the data and seeing the actual details themselves really gives you lots of different insights. So not only can we tell how well my sales team is doing, I can tell how well my marketing is doing. I could tell, you know, how how much revenue, you know, my firm should expect in the future just by the nature of the different signups. You know, as we move along, you know, we also are are, you know, going to be tracking the marketing efforts of the firm. So, you know, here I can see what my total marketing spend is. Again, if I explore my data over here, I can see where I've been spending all my different leads, all my different uh, marketing dollars with which different sources, you know, this is going to give you, indi this is going to indicate kind of which lead sources are performing the best. So, you know, you could see, you'll be able to see on this metric, you know, if you spent, you know, $3,000 with a certain source in a specific time frame, you know, did that actually uh, turn into, you know, dollars for the actual firm? So being able to see your marketing spend, comparing that to your different lead vendors, and then comparing that to the different cases that came in, really going to give you a lot of the that insight you need into drive the <clears throat> the decision making in the firm so you know as we move along yeah for um, yeah for for example you know you you want to know you know you're investing money every week every month in various pay-per-click and other marketing campaigns and you want to know that for example how did your google pay-per-click auto accident ads work out Verse, you know, maybe you're running a criminal defense ad on Google or Facebook or somewhere else, and you want to be able to see what actually happens when you invest those marketing dollars. And this allows you to put that all together and not just see the effectiveness of your intake team, but also to see how effective the marketing is, which marketing channels are working. And it allows you to very tactically see that and make data driven decisions to boost which sources are working and then put more marketing dollars there and then lower what's not working and reevaluate it and figure out what's going on. Exactly. Thank you, Dan. <clears throat> you know, I, just to kind of build on what Dan was saying, you know, we can see the marketing spend, but we can also see our leads by source. So that kind of tells us, you know, I can see what I've spent on my different firms and then I can also on my different sources, but then I can also see which sources are producing the best for me. So like Dan said, this really will drive your, decision making and determining which marketing sources you really want to invest those dollars in because this is the lifeblood of the law firm is getting the, you know signing up the new cases and making sure that you're able to get that positive return on investment from your marketing dollars so if we look at our different leads by source we could see trends you know we could see the different leads that are coming in different times of the year so you know this also will tell you you know maybe I should be investing in one source you know in the summer versus another source in the winter. So you can actually get that granular when it comes to, you know, informing your decision-making because the goal is to get as much data in front of you as possible and also show you that data in a way that, you know, you're able to make those meaningful decisions without having to really, you know, take a deep dive and analyze it. So, you know, we show all the different critical trends, all the, the top sources that are performing and then the statuses of all the statuses of all the leads that are attached to those different sources. So for example, if I see my attorney referral is yielding tons of new cases, it's yielding lots of signed e-signs, we know that, you know, it's time to grow your referral business. And, you know, we'll come back to that in a second because we can also track this, the, the, um, 
success of your different referral relationships. But being able to break down yeah. all of your leads by source, you know, is really going to drive that decision making. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, one more one more thing on that point before you move on, Hillel, is everybody who's ever invested in marketing knows that just because you're getting clicks to your landing page or website, just because you're getting calls to your phone numbers does not necessarily mean that any of that traffic is going to turn into revenue for the firm. It is super important to not just have these metrics available, but to have them all presented in such a way that it's easy to understand that. You could filter this by source, you know, on the right hand side, you could, you know, combine it with various marketing spends and really see what your ROI is, your return on your investment. Otherwise, it's wasting resources, keeping your staff busy on bad calls, bad leads, while you're making marketing investments into a source that may be giving you the wrong audience. You know, as an example, you might offer, you know, services for you know, legal services for potential clients, but maybe the person who's doing your ads, you know, running a marketing campaign makes a mistake and for some reason, you're getting people calling you that are looking to buy software for law firms. Certainly not what your firm would offer, and you'd be getting all those calls. Or maybe they're trying to reach their insurance company, not a law firm. And the ads need to be retooled, and you need to let your vendors know that, and hopefully they're going to be compliant with those changes and able to react quick enough. And this allows them to react quick enough before they burn through all your budgets. That's the last thing that we want to happen to any of our clients. Dan, you make actually a really great point. So, you know, just looking at this one metric over here, your leads by status, if you see all of, you know, a ton of your leads are being rejected, you know, you can dive down a little bit deeper and see what lead source are all of those coming from? Because I can see I'm spending a lot of money with that lead source, but these are all turning into dead leads. So, you know, like Dan mentioned, all that's doing is wasting marketing dollars, keeping the staff busy when they could be focusing on something else. So, you know, the ability to easily be able to break down the success of your different uh, lead sources is going to be really critical. And that's what we're kind of showing you here when you see the different leads by status. So that allows you to get those insights into how successful these different sources actually are for your firm. Your firm. Um, Moving on, you know, now that we see lots of leads coming in, we're signing up lots of leads, you know, we can tell that our, our closing percentage is very high. So, you know, we're, our firm is doing great. Now we want to explore what types of cases are we actually signing up? So this is another thing that, you know, is kind of going to inform your, you know, decision making when it comes to, you know, deploying the different dollars for the firm. You know, are we signing up the right types of cases? So again, we can see what our different case types are by sign up. It shows us the different types. You know, if the goal is to grow criminal defense, you know, and we know that we're doing really great in auto accident, we don't care too much about dog bites or slip and fall, but we really want to grow criminal defense. This is just going to show you how many criminal defense cases we have over a given time period. And this is going to give you, again, that insight into saying, okay, you know, my one marketing source that's generating my auto accidents is doing great. You know, maybe I'm going to take a little bit of that budget and direct it towards my criminal defense um, practice because that's what I really want to grow. So being able to see what types of cases you're signing up is also going to allow the firm to make those right decisions so that they can, you know, again, grow the different areas of the practice. They can maximize what's being spent, you know, and, you know, make the firm as effective as it can in actually signing up the cases that are being generated. Yeah, another point on that, if you don't mind just jumping back to that for one moment, sorry, is yes, sure, you're getting cases, you're growing certain practice areas, but is there an opportunity for more growth? Can you optimize your sales marketing funnel further and streamline it better? Yeah, there are always opportunities. So if I was looking at this data and I was managing a firm, I would say, okay, it looks like we're getting more non e sign cases, the orange line in the top right hand corner, than we're getting e sign, which is the completed, the blue one. So we do know and we have found that e sign is a much more powerful and direct sign up technology than a mailed packet. And in fact, your competitors might be using e sign while you're mailing packets, and that could be hurting your your intakes that could be hurting your potential revenue that could be garnered, you know, from these, in, from these leads. So it's really important to see these things where 
if this was my firm and I saw, and I saw that there was all these non e sign cases coming in and it wasn't a very good reason for it, I would say, hey, how do we get e sign implemented here? I'd want to see more e sign than mail packets because I know I'm keeping my competitors away and I know I'm keeping what's my business when I make that kind of decision. So that's a recommendation that I would stand behind. And you would never be able to see this data without this type of insight. You know, it's exactly right. It's also really, it's, yeah, yeah, it's also really important that we all want to get high dollar cases. You can't get high dollar cases if you don't have data to see who's working and what's working. So, you know, by taking this data, you can actually share this with your vendors. You can filter these reports by source for, for the ones that you need to, and you can share that with your vendors, and it allows them to do a better job for you. The more information that you can give your marketing vendors or your marketing director at your firm, the better results that you're going to get. And it's going to allow you to scale your spend in a controlled way, hopefully, that will allow you to get a better return on your investment, and it'll be great for everybody. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. Oh, whoops. Close that out. <clears throat> All right. So, you know, just kind of building off what Dan said, you know, not only, um, you know, when he mentioned e-signs, you know, something to keep in mind is that the lead time on getting a signed contract is way smaller when it comes to utilizing e-signs. And using this report, you could see which practice areas are actually utilizing e-signs versus non-e-signs. And this will allow you to kind of tailor your approach and say, I see I'm signing up a lot of auto accidents, but it's taking me a month because half of them are on paper are signed up on paper. You know, this will allow you to streamline your process and maybe say, let's try and sign up 50% more auto accidents on e-sign, and that will more quickly grow the firm and grow the revenue for the firm. Yeah, the text e-sign is a powerful technology and, and it's always going to outperform mail contracts or emailing a copy of an e-sign and and we do have that feature available and we encourage every client to implement it awesome so you know something that i wanted to come back to uh, that we talked about earlier um, were the success of your referral relationships you know are you able to are your r referral partners you know successfully grabbing these leads are they convert are they taking them are they converting them so keeping track of your referral relationships and being able to see that also all in one place you know comparing to the you know all the different metrics that we have it's really going to allow <clears throat> you to make you know again decide which referral firms are generating the be the best return for your firm so we can always explore our referral data we can go inside we could see the success of all of our different referrals so we can it, once we send a referral out we can track whether that referral has been accepted. We can see how long it's been sitting there. So, you know, maybe, you know, right now I'm looking at this, I can see four pending referrals. So to me, I would want to look at my different referral firms and say, why are these not accepted? You know, we sent you four referrals. You know, it's important that you guys jump on top of these so that we don't lose the case. Um, why are these all in the status pending? So being able to track all of this, being able to see that your referral partners are quickly jumping on these different cases instead of letting them sit in their inbox um, is really gonna be important. And having visibility into the success of your um, referral relationships will allow you to grow those relationships in the right way. You know, Dan keeps talking about scaling up the firm. So if you notice that you have certain referral relationships that are you know, really, really vital and key and these, these partners are doing a great job you know, taking the cases and accepting them, you know, that, that lets you know, these are the people that my firm can grow with, as opposed to, you know, the occasional attorney, they may send you a case here and there, but when you send them a case, they don't do anything with it. You know, those, you know, the firm would be wasting their time with those types of relationships when they could really be growing the ones that are going to be much more successful. So we could see lots of metrics in this one report. You know, we could see the top firms that we're sending referrals to, how many referrals are being sent we can track which case types we're referring out. So again, this just kind of allows the firm to, you know, target their growth in the right way. You know, if we know that we're referring out lots of dog bite cases, you know, maybe this is a process that we want to automate. If we get a new dog bite case inside our system, instead of, you know, going through the intake and, you know, sending them an e-sign, maybe we just want to send it directly to the referral firm. And using our referral automation, these are things that you can do inside of Larvler. You know, same thing with slip and falls or auto accidents. 
you know, you're able to, depending on the practice area, actually, you know, automate a lot of this process so that not only do we have visibility into it, but also it's being done in an automated fashion, which allows it, you know, the process to, to run a lot smoother because it kind of eliminates the human error component. And then we can also see the status of the different cases that are referred out. So what status these people are in, you know, whether they're in signed e-sign, sent to referral firm, you know, whether the referral firm has declined or accepted the referral, I'll be able to see all of that in one easy to use view. Yeah, um, hello, on, on, that, on that note, I had one more point I wanted to share. So I, I think that it's nice to give referrals. They're a great compliment, they fuel business. However, first and foremost, giving a referral is revenue that your firm can get. Re and sending and receiving referrals is something that needs to be tracked very carefully. You know, it might be easy just to open up your email and just send an email to somebody and say, hey, I have a potential client for you. Here's your name and phone number and hit send. What happens six months or a year from then when you think you might be owed a fee and you got to fish through your email box and try and find out where all your referrals went? You don't get a refund in your marketing from Google or Facebook or any other marketing source if you don't take that type of case and you have a valid referral that you qualify. So you want to have a system that's going to allow you to track this. We have such a system. And this report is something that you can actually filter it by the referral firm. And you're going to be able to see the best firms that you're working with as far as how they handle your referrals. And unfortunately, if you don't have this type of tracking, it's very hard to get paid your fees. You know, we all like doing things to be charitable and kind to others, but you know, a law firm is, a, is generally structured as a for-profit business. And it's very important that if you're investing your marketing dollars and you're getting these referrals and you're helping another law firm grow and supporting them, they would love to give you the feedback, but even the best firms don't always remember. Printing out this data and filtering it by firm is something that allows you to take that report and share it with them and say, hey, what's going on with these cases? You know, do I get any, any, uh, any fees yet? Any, you know, you have to remind people, you have to keep the honest people honest. You know, people forget things w without malintent all the time. So, you know, everybody's busy, multitasking, wearing a lot of hats. Very important to do that. You want to get paid. And even more so, you want to foster and you want to build these referral relationships. So, you know, you, you want to see where most of your referrals are coming or going from, at, you know, and you want to be able to, you know, even buy gift cards or, or some kind of present to reward your biggest assets. You know, if somebody is referring you a lot of cases or you're referring them cases and they're doing a good job with them, you want to continue to, you know, work on those relationships and improve them and, and show that you're invested in them. So, you know, it's definitely something where you have to have the right system and even more so you have to have the reporting to back it up and know what's going on at all times. Awesome. So, you know, now we're, we're kind of coming down to, you know, one of the final metrics on the report. Um, you know, we've explored, you know, the new leads coming to the system, the signups, you know, which lead sources are providing the best cases, you know, which cases we're actually signing up and, you know, ultimately which referrals we're sending out. Something that we also would want to see when we're just looking at the overall health of the firm is how, pro how, how productive is my staff actually. So using the milestone phases report, we can actually see all the different tasks that are being done or being completed or, or that are not being completed by your different staff members. So if we take a look at this report, you know, once it opens up, we'll be able to see all of the different staff members, how many clients they have per staff member, so we can see their workload. I can also see how many completed tasks I have per staff member. So, you know, for example, I see Matthew, he has one completed task. You know, if I look over here, I see Matthew only has two clients. So that's great that he's com completing all of his tasks. Um, however, I do see that he only has two clients, but he's also at the top of my my staff members that have incomplete tasks. So what that tells me is that, you know, maybe his workload is too great. Maybe he, I'm not, you know, I don't have him working on the right types of cases because he's not able to complete all the, the workload that he has inside the system. So being able to see, you know, what's been completed, what's incomplete, what's been assigned to your different staff members, that gives you a lot of insights into seeing how productive they are. And then, you know, we could always drill down in the data itself so we can see, you know, what types of case they are, what status they're in, 
So, you know, again, we can always see all the different users in the system and we can actually get a breakdown of, you know, how many incomplete tasks they have, how many completed tasks there are. And this gives you a lot of that visibility that you need to make sure that your staff members are staying on track. You know, because again, it's great that you're bringing in cases to the law firm. It's great that they're being signed up. But, you know, if you notice that there's a real hole in where your staff members are performing, that could really undo a lot of those positive things that you've been able to achieve for your firm. So, you know, ultimately, yeah. it kind of all comes down to, you know, after you've generated the leads and cases and signed them up, are we actually on top of them? So this really gives you that, you know, final insight you need to make, you know, make sure that well, the firm is, you know, kind of doing what they need to do. Yeah, so in, in regards to that, hello, you know, I think it's important to also mention that, you know, with this type of data, you can do a few things. First of all, you're going to see where your top performers are. You're going to be able to see where there are training opportunities with, with other team members who either might not understand that they have tasks to do, or maybe they're not equipped to do certain tasks. You might have an intake person who's, who's really good at handling car accident cases, while you might have somebody else on staff who just happens to be better at doing the follow-ups, and they could be using our our smart dialer to make those follow-ups and they're more of a phone personality and they're very effective at that. And if you see that they're underperforming certain tasks here, but you know, they're, you know, a master on the phone, you're going to want to be able to redirect staff, you know, based on data, you have to make data back decisions. You can't always rely on your gut because unfortunately it, it doesn't always tell you the best choice. Another thing is if this was my firm and I was looking at this report and, and we have this demo, sandbox designed this way with with intent you'll see that the top of each of these charts here for the clients per user top five completed tasks per user and incomplete tasks you'll see that the majority of them are unassigned it, it, meaning that nobody is assigned to complete these tasks if this was my firm and i saw that i would immediately know that that my workflow needs to be updated that there was something going on and things are slipping through the cracks not only because of employees but because of a configuration concern. And I would immediately, you know, look and see which case type it is, auto accident. And I would see that, you know, something's going on here where my auto accident milestones and tasks are not being assigned to anybody. And they're very simple adjustments, but this is not just a management tool of your employees. It's also a management tool of your workflow. And then you can change the workflow around and assign these to the staff each employee that is the best for the job that needs to be done. So there are a lot of things that this can do for you, a lot of places it can go for you. So, you know, that, that's just one of the many use cases of it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dan. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, this, what, what you guys are seeing here is our, you know, firm dashboard. You know, th these are some statistics that we built in because, you know, we, we knew every law firm would need to be able to measure these things. Um, this dashboard is also very malleable. What that means is that, you know, as a law firm, you will have the opportunity to develop your own metrics. And those are things that we can always build for you directly into the report. So, you know, what we're looking at here is, you know, just the basic dashboard. But, you know, as time goes on and as you, you discover the different KPIs that you really want to measure inside your system, those are always things that we can build out custom for each one of our law firms. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to turn it over to any questions. Um, we have our moderating panel, so if you want to um, type any questions into the the uh, Q and A screen, feel free, and uh, one of our panelists will go ahead and address it for you. Guy, yeah, I, I had a question. It says I I can't see the dashboard when I am logging into the Law Ruler system. So if you can't see the dashboard, one of the reasons for that would be, first off, this type of reporting data, it is considered, you know, manage, management only data in a lot of firms. So you would have to have your user account set up by your firm administrator or IT person to allow you to be, view reports in Law Ruler. If you have the reports permission or you're an administrative user, then you should be able to see the dashboard. If you still do not, and please contact our support team at support at lawruler.com or visit us at support.lawruler.com and they will be happy to help you rectify that concern. You know, but to reiterate, 
This feature is complimentary for all value law ruler clients. There are many companies that charge you thousands of dollars a year and upwards just for access to a dashboard. We wanted our clients to have this as a value add to strengthen the system and make it more meaningful for them and be able to manage their businesses better. So we have another question. Uh, I was late to the seminar. Will the recording be available? Absolutely. We'll make it available on YouTube and share the link afterward. Uh, another question. Is the date range 100% customizable or can I select only the menu choices? So the date range is 100% customizable. We have all the common choices. Uh, for example, month to date, quarter to date, year to date, you know, last year or this month. And we also have a, if you want to show hello, we have a, we have an option um, in the drill down. It, we can smooth past it where you can actually hit a custom date once you're drilling down in the information. So um, next question. So then we have a question see. about um, managing marketing spending. Okay. So they yeah. want to know how do you manage? Have... Go ahead. How do you manage the marketing spending? Do you manually input your market channels? Um, yeah, at this time, we, we have been asked by our clients to allow them to manually input that screen. There is a place in the setup menu. If you see the gear icon in the bottom left-hand corner, you would go there and then hit marketing expenses. And in that screen, you would be able to enter the marketing expenses for each channel and the system will automatically you know, take that and apply it to all the leads and cases and such that came from that source. One of the, I will say one of the many benefits of our approach is that when your intake, when your firm members answer a call and they talk to somebody who's first reaching the firm, you should never have to ask them where they heard about you. There are many other solutions on the market that make, your, make you manually ask that question. Well, guess what? You might be running 10 different campaigns on Google, and they're all, co they're all costing a lot of money. It's a big investment every, every, every week, every month. And you want to know which one's working. So when your staff says, oh, now where did you hear about us? Because they're working with a system other than Law Ruler, and they don't have that data automatically put into the system upon each lead being created, it becomes very problematic because it does not allow you to tie back your success to your marketing channels. So it's very important that, that the lead source and the campaign information is all inserted automatically. And that is one of the things that we implement for our clients. So if you have any questions about that, again, please let us know, but we'd be happy to help further. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where um, as far as entering the data, you only have to enter the marketing spends. Like for example, I spent $5,000 a month on Google, or I spent $10,000 a month on Facebook or I hired you know, this firm and they're one of my partner firms and they referred me these cases and I spent this much money or whatever it might be, it takes about a minute to enter the data. You, but you do not have to enter where your leads came from, you only enter the expenses. So, and we do all the math for you. So everything else is captured automatically. Awesome, thank you so much, Dan. Um, <clears throat> I don't see that there are any other questions, but you know, if you do have any other questions, you can always feel free to reach out to our sales team or to your account manager directly. They'll be happy to go through a demo with you and you know, answer any specific questions that you guys have. I just wanna thank everyone for joining and we will see you at our next webinar.